Good morning. Albert Einstein famously said that the only source of knowledge is experience. Experiential learning is the way we grow in knowledge, and even more so in wisdom. Is anyone like me an experienced person? I tend not to define myself by the jobs listed on my resume, but by my encounters with real life. I'll tell you true stories about riding in a tank in Kabul, Afghanistan, or on my seventh skydive when my parachute didn't open, or lying on the floor talking to God as a teenager at summer camp, or what it felt like when I watched my lifelong anticipated first space shuttle launch. I could tell you stories about the first time I saw a baby be born and I was speechless, or the first time I had a dream in another language. This is very common with millennials. We'd rather have experiences than stuff. This is me climbing a bridge nearly 500 feet above Sydney Harbor. We want to suck the marrow out of life, to live deliberately, and not, when I came to die, discover that I had not lived. It's those connections between our experiences that define the path in front of us, creating a user interface by which we pioneer the future. But what's unique in our generation is how we access that experience. The internet and social media permit us unique insights into the real lives of our fellow human beings. Just think about the impact of apps like PostSecret and Snapchat. Before I graduated from college, I had never left the country or connected meaningfully beyond my own borders in Texas. Now, I can instantly read the inmost thoughts of perfect strangers all over the world, watch live as astronauts spacewalk outside the International Space Station dozens of miles above my head, text with an old friend who lives on a mountainside in Morocco, or witness explorers free climbing in Yosemite National Park. But the awesome thing is that I have the ability not just to access that experience, but to personally contribute to it. I can fund small loans to micro-entrepreneurs in Thailand. I gave a conference keynote in real time to a technology summit in Afghanistan. I can, or I could if I were Icelandic, personally make additions and comments to my national constitution immediately impacting the governance of my nation. Our experiences are the raw materials of our life stories. And when we can create these experiences in new ways, we expand what's possible in front of us. We've managed to change the nature of the human experience. So what does it mean to be human? Humans are driven to explore the unknown, to discover new worlds, to push the boundaries of our scientific and technical knowledge, and then keep going. The intangible desire to explore and challenge boundaries of what we know and where we've been and where we can or cannot go has been the impetus for a growing society for centuries. Being human means I want to reach out, to touch, to feel. It means we want to explore everything and be different because of it. For me, it was always about space. As a small child, the space shuttle completely ignited my imagination about exploration. I watched every space movie I could find, carrying around a well-worn copy of the space shuttle operator's manual in one hand and my astronaut Cabbage Patch Kid in the other. My elementary school classes crowded around the television to watch every launch, and those brave astronauts were the first to teach me about hard work, adventure, and courage. I had my fifth birthday party on the main lawn of the Johnson Space Center, looking up at Mission Control and wondering if one day I would know what it was like to walk and live on Mars. But here's the thing. Like so many people, I stopped wanting to become an astronaut in high school. I tell you, pre-calculus was a nightmare. And my teachers encouraged me to stick to humanities and communications. More importantly, I realized that my crippling motion sickness would be quite a handicap in microgravity. (laughs) I gave up that astronaut dream, but that desire to be an explorer never went away. I might not be a PhD scientist or fly a spaceship, 
but I was still committed to being fully human and deeply engaged. I wanted to know what the frontier was like myself, not from hearing other people's stories or watching movies or reading what they wrote. I wanted to see it. But here's the shocking part. Later, almost 20 years later, when I started working at NASA, I discovered not everyone got passionate about these things. A lot of people were just doing a job and maybe doing it well, but not engaged about or excited about the why. My previous careers had shown that most organizations were like this, but this was NASA. Some of them didn't even notice those historic rockets they drove by every morning. Conversely, I knew a ton of people excited about exploration as I was, and most of them never got to even visit a space center, much less work for one. Were th was their passion and experience and excitement useful? NASA's famous goal to pioneer the future would need all of us to succeed. A term popularized with the advent of the Open Government Initiative, citizen engagement simply means allowing all individuals to contribute and participate in a mission. At NASA, we have our own term for this, and it's called participatory exploration. It's fundamentally about making the whole enterprise of space exploration, research and development, science, technology, discovery, human exploration, making it all participatory and unleashing that human spirit of innovation. All of a sudden, I didn't have to be an astronaut to be an explorer. And that same spirit of exploration that I admired in those seven orange-suited astronauts that cold January morning in 1986, I could be a meaningful part of that same calling in the place where I was with the talents and experiences I had. My limitations weren't really limitations, but in fact, they might be exactly what NASA needed. Participatory exploration is a key part of how NASA is shifting the way we accomplish the mission. It's not just how individuals get involved in government or exploration, but how NASA gets its challenges out to the people, whether related to technology, processes, procedures, or policies, and then gets valuable impact back from them, inviting them to engage in new ways that we've never done before. What once was unidirectional has now become multidirectional. What was originally the field of seven white male fighter pilots has now become the realm of any and every citizen who wants to use data, evaluate imagery, and be part of pioneering the future. If I code, I can send my Raspberry Pi code directly to the space station, or 3D printers now. If I do graphics, I can see and use live imagery from Curiosity on Mars on the same day. If I'm an architect, I can design greenhouses for future use on Mars. If I sew, I can make a skirt that lights up with LEDs to show the location of the space station in orbit around Earth. <laughs> no kidding. Participatory exploration calls on all of us to take advantage of our ideas, perspectives, skills, and talents outside the agency, those that have always been on the periphery, and make them part of our core decision-making processes. This is especially true in times of shrinking budgets, constrained resources, and increased demands for a more open and transparent government. We have unprecedented opportunities now to share our thoughts and ideas, to engage in diverse collaboration, collaborations and create change in every sector of life, largely unhindered by geographical, political, or economic boundaries. A colleague and I once marveled about how the media, and even us at NASA, usually talk about spaceflight. We talk about the size of a rocket, pounds of thrust, trajectory of orbits, number of orbits. But what's the soul of that spaceship, he asked me. What does she dream about? What's her why? What does she teach us that we don't already know? This is my kind of exploration. Science and technology are great tools that tell us what and how, but I'm the one who wants to get in there and figure out the why. That human spirit can take us anywhere. It's all about the yes we each say to those high-risk opportunities to learn, to grow, to contribute. Maybe for you, it's not about space. 
Let's talk instead for a minute about spirit. Less than a month ago, the world watched live as climbers Tommy Caldwell and Kevin Jorgensen free climbed the dawn wall of Yosemite's El Capitan. 3,000 vertical feet, arguably the most difficult ascent in climbing. Impossible to free climb, experts said. Too steep, not enough holes, every edge too sharp. For seven years, the team failed, but they never stopped climbing. Their level of physical, technical, and mental mastery, their level of commitment to what they wanted to be a part of only continued to grow. 36-year-old Tommy Caldwell, self-described as a clumsy kid with really bad hand-eye coordination <laughs> and missing a finger from an accident with a table saw, was surely unlikely to achieve great success in a passion that involves really careful balance and hanging from your fingertips. But after the successful 19-day climb, he turned around and said this, I want the only takeaway for people to ask themselves, what's my dawn wall? Everyone has a big project in life they want to do, and that's what resonates. Dreaming big, teamwork, collaboration, perseverance, these are the fundamentally human attributes that we can all relate to. Exploration is that connection between you and the unknown. It's that connection between now and the better future in front of the whole human race. So friends, what's your dawn wall? What's your Mars? What's the hazardous journey that you're ready to line up for, to spend all your free time on, to change your career path, to get your hands dirty and maybe bloody? Where did you first learn bravery or see beauty? What's that dream you had as a small child that would keep you up at night going, when I'm big, I want to? It's time for you to find that vision, to find that team and be part of that dream. People hear my story and they always say, yeah, yeah, that's because NASA is so awesome. But I know the truth, NASA is only awesome because of people like you and people like me who say, I want to be part of the dream. I, I count, my experience matters. And that future, NASA needs all of us to come and be part of that story that it's writing. Canadian astronaut Chris Hadfield, recently returned from six months on the International Space Station, said this, we are not machines exploring the universe. We are people. We are taking that ability to adapt that ability to understand, and that ability to have our own self-perception into a brand new future. What we're really exploring is what it means to be human and to understand our universe. And I hope you come along and be part of the adventure. Thank you. Mm -hmm.